Gaming casuals, we are back. Woo. This is your news from a gaming perspective. <laughs> Brandon. John. It's been a minute, man. It has been many minutes. We have fought through coronavirus, staffing changes, and we are back in black. We are here. And yes, we are we here are. <laughs> <laughs> to bring you gaming news from a casual perspective. Yes. Man, tell me a little bit about your coronavirus gaming experiences. How's it been um, dealing with coronavirus? You know, I have three kids, three little boys. Only three. So the whole quarantine for me has not been boring at all. I mean, literally, Ooh. it is with three little boys. You don't go out anyway, even on a normal day. So we've been locked in the house with them, and it is uh, life, as nor uh, life as usual. So it's been great. Don't get me wrong. But wow, three little boys under four have a lot of energy. So. But Brando, I am so glad. That we get to come back. Yes, it has been yes. Too too long. Let's get started with all the gaming news that you guys may not have heard during the quarantine. We're gonna start off with a little bit of Xbox action coming at you. Xbox Series X yes. was announced over over the quarantine, I feel like. And well, in, and we've had a lot of news since May. Yeah, we have. So So we're gonna talk a little bit about what's going on with Series X. So first off, we are still slated to see Xbox Series X on the holiday. Yes. This year, 2020. Phil Spencer has come out and said that their plans are still uh, gung-ho for holiday this year. Um, they said that the uh, the impact of COVID-19 has not been uh, a, a huge uh, issue for them as far as the console. They did say that games may see some delays possibly, but they haven't come out and delayed anything outright yet, which is Right, nice. which is very good. Yes, I'm still excited to play Halo this Yes, uh, we this still Christmas. want our Halo Infinite yes. on launch day. <laughs> oh. Um, but we also have a couple of other games coming out that they've released. They're starting this whole like Xbox 2020, this month monthly look at some new stuff coming in. And we've yes. got Minecraft Dungeons oh. happening, which looks incredible. And that's coming out like very soon, like this in yeah. May, in May, right? It's coming very, very, very soon. Oh. And then also, not only that, but all of these major releases for Xbox are also coming to PC for any Game Pass holders out there. So if you guys are Game Pass subscribers and you got a PC, you're going to get all these games directly to your PC through Game Pass. I love Game Pass. Still, I've always said it, one of the best deals in gaming ever. And I love having all of those uh, first party games to my console day one. Yeah. Or in the Will of the Wisps. Oh, man. Such a good game. Played that day one. Ah. Oh. So good. If you guys have not subscribed to the Netflix that is gaming, <laughs> go to Game Pass. It is incredible. We'll talk about Game Pass a little more. We'll talk about PlayStation 5, but it's kicking the pants out of PlayStation now. Anyway, spoiler. <laughs> but don't forget about Smart Delivery. So Smart Delivery is going to allow you guys to upgrade your titles that have been developed for previous gen consoles and get free graphics updates when the Series X releases. Such a great feature that Microsoft has come out with because... And, and it's not something that is by default uh, for developers, but it is there if they want to take advantage of it. You buy a game now for Xbox One, One X, uh, One S. It will be, if it has smart delivery turned on, you will get the Series X version of that day one or whenever they, they come out with that, which is so nice to have. Right. You don't have to pay twice for games like you did the last generation. I know I remember back with the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One, it was like, oh, I can get Assassin's Creed Black Flag on which one should I do? I don't know because I can get it early on the 360. Uh, it, none of that stuff. You buy it one time and you get it on all your consoles. So right now the titles that... I believe are confirmed right now include Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Cyberpunk 2077, and Minecraft Dungeons. And once again, with more to come as developers decide to use the smart delivery system. Yes. So obviously, we're going to talk a little bit about the hardware specs on Xbox One Series X. They've been going through it on their month-by-month -month looks. Um, I think one of the biggest noticeable differences, Brandon, is that we're going to see with the Series X the support for hardware accelerated direct X ray tracing. <laughs> That is a, which is a mouthful. lot of words, yes. a lot of words, <laughs> which quote unquote simulates the properties of light and sound in real time more accurately than any technology before it. So that sounds great. It's great marketing <laughs> speak. I Take guess. my money, Microsoft. <laughs> but they, they actually I'll flash up some pictures of the Minecraft dungeons. 
they've got a comparison of the Xbox One S graphics compared to the Series X, and they're they're incredible. The, so the the ray tracing demo. I mean, when they showed that off at one of their uh, one of their videos or announcements. It was so crazy to see a game like Minecraft, which you don't think of as a graphical game. It is very, uh, has a very unique style. And when they turned on ray tracing, you just see those light rays come in through the caverns and whatever they were showing on there. It was unreal just seeing a game like that, how it was enhanced by that one feature. So I am so excited to see how other games take advantage of that. I think they were saying, too, that older games, because it's going to be backwards compatible right. with uh, Xbox One games, of course, Xbox 360 and, and Xbox, original Xbox, as long as they're in the back, back compat uh, lineup, that uh, they said that you're going to see graphical improvements on those just out the gate on the Series X, which is so exciting. So make sure you get your 4K TVs and your HDMI 2 ports because yes. it's going to be insane. And let's not forget about Xbox Velocity Architecture. This is more of a system they designed for developers, but it's going to help those developers create huge immersive worlds with blitzing fast load times. And so essentially it's going to allow let developers load up to 100 gigabytes of assets in game so you're not limited say you're playing you know a bethesda game <laughs> you're not limited to the 10 pixels or the 20 polygons bethesda gives you for character animations it's going to be huge making huge games really really immersive basically for all the casual gamers out there no loading times it's going to be fast which is exciting all right so quickly we're going to go through a couple of other things about the xbox architecture series x architecture and brand you can feel free to chime in about things you really know about but CPU, 8 cores at 3.8 gigahertz. Um, and then we've got GPU, 12 teraflops, 52 CUs, 1.825 gigahertz custom RDNA 2 GPU. That is insane. And, of course, we've got the expandable SSD memory. Yes. Yes. Tell us a bit about the SSD yeah, memory. So the SSD, this is where uh, the consoles kind of shine, in my opinion. I love that we're going to SSDs this generation because it's going to be – faster, again, like we were talking about earlier with the technology, that's exciting. But because of the SSD, um, games are going to be, uh, they're going to be designed with that architecture in mind. Uh, when you run out of space on there, if you want to put in a, an external hard drive, you can do it, but I believe it's only going to be for Xbox One games, 360 original Xbox games on that that's supported. Uh, you will you will have the ability to do expanded external storage. Yeah. Uh, I believe they have little, uh, looks like we're going back to memory cards kind of, right. but external SSDs, and I think Seagate is the... Uh, the current or the um, the uh, exclusive manufacturer with that or something right now, but you have the ability to pop these little SSD cards uh, into the back of the Xbox Series X to expand that storage. But uh, SSDs, I mean, no moving parts inside of the uh, that. Just like I mean, nowadays our phones and computers are all right. SSDs. So, and my favorite part about the SSD is that it'll have up to one terabyte. Yep. expansion cards and it's going to match the internal speeds of the SSD exactly. Yes. You're not going to see any any load time differences between an expansion card and the internal SSD, it's all pretty seamless, and that is really exciting. Yes, exactly. And uh, don't forget about that 4K at 60 frames per second. That yes. performance target up to 120 frames per second. Which I honestly, I, I've not really experienced it. I'm not, I have not really been a PS, uh, PS, P, a PC gamer, so I'm not used to those, uh, uh, those frame rates that people talk about with PC, Master Race. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm an Xbox uh, guy. I, yeah. Same here. So They're all PCs of, now, apparently. They are, exactly. <laughs> but I'm excited to see that because, again, uh, 60 frames a second, I hear that games like Destiny, which is an old old favorite for rip, us. Rip Destiny, uh, too. Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I hear that playing a game like that on consoles has been 30 frames per second currently, and PC gamers get that at 60. And I hear it's a totally yes. different game at 60 frames a second. So seeing that Microsoft has come out the gate saying, we want all our games to be 4K 60 by default. Now, again, that's Microsoft's push for that. Again, it falls on the developers right. to make use of that. Um, I know some games recently have been announced that they are trying to shoot for that at maybe 30. I think it was... Uh, anyway, on one of Microsoft's most recent 2020 videos, they had 
uh, back for this month in May, um, there were definitely some things that uh, were kind of like, wait a second, I thought it was 4K60. So it is based on developers to use this, but Microsoft really wanted that to be the standard going across the board. And hopefully the free market will truly push these yeah. devs to increase the 60 frames per exactly. second. Exactly. Without the crunch, we get it. We it's, understand. The technology is there. Hopefully, they can uh, right. make the most of it. And 60 really is a big difference. If you ever played Halo, Halo 5, that was in a native 60 frame per second format. But you can tell with the Halo 5, it doesn't look as good as current games running at 30. But you had that smoothness, and it was there for PvP, and it made a difference. Right. So let's, let's take an aside from Xbox and talk about Nintendo now. So we don't have a ton of Nintendo <laughs> Switch news, but we'll give you what we got. Obviously, we had a release of Animal Crossing New Horizons yes. over the course of a quarantine. Now, that was a huge thing for a whole lot of people. They were crying out for Animal Crossing, it <laughs> felt like. And originally, Nintendo pushed Animal Crossing, and so... To release that in the middle of quarantine, and yeah. it was making sure Seems like that, it was a perfect video game for right, that. <laughs> a perfect time for people to just like veg out on their couch and play New Horizons. Um, and so it's super popular. And if you guys really enjoy, like, I feel like second lifestyle simulators, so like things like Harvest Moon, Stardew Valley, you know, things you're willing to do until you just get tired of the game that never really stops, you know, you really like this game. People have really <laughs> enjoyed it. There's a whole lot of customization and ability you can do. And, and it's definitely a a Switch title that you want to get if you are hardcore about AAA Switch titles. Yeah, I haven't gotten it yet. I have never really played Animal Crossing, but I know so many people love this game. Uh, I'm sure I would love it. Uh, it's one of those games, though, uh, I guess I'm assuming it's easy to pick up and, and yes, play. Yes, but a it is a time suck. Yeah. It will suck your time away. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's good. But then on other news with Nintendo Switch titles, we've got Xenoblade Chronicles coming May 29th. So originally, Xenoblade was released for Wii back in 2012. But that's where we had Shulk featured. So if you guys are Smash Bros. fans, you want to play the Xenoblade Chronicles game with Shulk, you definitely want to pick up this game. And then, of course, we've got a new release, Paper Mario, the Origami yes. King. If you guys have not played a Paper Mario <laughs> game, you're really missing out, okay? It will change your life. It is a RPG-based game, and it is a ton of fun. They had one for Wii, they had one for GameCube, and one for Nintendo 64 originally. Yes. It is an incredible game. I would recommend picking up um, Origami King. So Paper Mario, that series has been one of my favorites in the Mario universe because of it's a turn-based RPG, and it is uh, the the way that the game is structured. Uh, it's very different from normal Mario games. And I, I it's I believe that it kind of spun off, or they they kind of uh, took that from back in the day Super Mario RPG: Legend of the Seven Stars for yes. Super Nintendo. Yes, that game, one of my favorite Super Nintendo games. And Paper Mario, kind of, it, it's not the same, right. but it definitely has elements of that. Um, I think it makes a, it does a great job of taking the RPG element and infusing it into the Mario universe. You've got uh, a bunch of characters that you can meet along the way and party up with and and just a really cool, uh, unique game. So I'm very excited to see this latest iteration. Right. And it's so soon, too. Literally announced yes. it. And it's like, oh, it's coming in a couple months. So Right. And I will <laughs> say, like, as a... Nintendo fan, like Nintendo has always been innovative with their games. You think Breath of the Wild, you think Yoshi's Woolly World, like these are really special takes. And I've seen the trailer for Paper Mario. It looks so good. It'll probably be a day one pick for me. Brando, would it be a day one pick for you? I think it will. If you could, if I, you could. I, now I will say, I have said this in the past, like, oh, I'm getting that day one. And then life gets in the way and it's like, well... I've already missed the first, you know, three months, six months. I'll wait till it goes on sale just with life. This one may have to be because it's it's such a classic for me that this series. So I know I can see myself sitting in bed playing handheld mode uh, yes. while the yes. family is asleep. Just totally uh, going that route. Exactly. And I will say um, in Super Smash Brothers news going out for Paper Mario, we do have a new character, the ARMS character. And uh, Sakurai has said that because of COVID, they are pushing back development on the new characters. But we have a whole new fighter pack with a whole new slosh of characters. And it'll be super exciting what they pick. Curious about that. So you say it's a whole new fighter pack. So I never actually jumped into the DLC for Smash Brothers. Yeah. So is this, they, do they already complete the first fighter pack? Is so it all done? The fighter pack, the first fighter pack, I believe, will be completed with the arms character. Oh, okay. So okay. that'll be done. But they are they have announced a second pack. A right? second fighter pack, a second and we don't pack know who's of five. In it yet. We do not. No clue. I will say, even though I have not jumped into the DLC, I love they're still putting new characters out yes. there. Yes. I, 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 of the ones announced, I think if I were to have 
jumped in, Banjo Kazooie would be, of have course. been, and it's a really one strong my, character. Yeah, one so. of my favorites there. Um, but and I know there's been some that have been more uh, obscure characters. Yes, but, and uh, some that have been <laughs> vehemently hated, like the seventh Fire Emblem character. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, anyway. So, but it's exciting to see it. They're continuing to support that with a whole new pack for others. I'm excited. I hope they bring some of those characters that people absolutely love yes. to the series. And if you guys have any ideas for what those characters might be, let us know in the comments below what you yes. think would be a great Smash Brothers character. I'm holding out for for Master Chief, but I don't oh, think it's going to happen. Well, they I don't know. Microsoft don't know. and Nintendo have been buddy buddy. Yeah. I don't I, I don't know for sure. <laughs> we got Snake, so that's enough to like be like that it could true. happen. It yeah. could happen. And I was going to say we, we I, I thought it was going to be Cuphead, but they, oh, yeah. they did not have a Cuphead, but they do have a Cuphead skin. They have a Cuphead skin. Though. That's, yeah, that's, they have a skin. That's, so there is there is some cross pollination there. So right. I say Gino from Super Mario RPG. You think? I I don't know. I feel like that could be a good one. It's obscure, but people love him. So excellent. Well, out from Nintendo, we're going into PlayStation Five news. Yes. And honestly, guys, we're sorry. <laughs> not a ton of details on the PlayStation Five. We got a teaser trailer for the Unreal Engine Five running on ps5 yes. that was cool that was very cool actually. i am gonna say the most high-end pcs can run on real five yes oh they could or couldn't they can yeah they can yeah they can and, and they did come out and say that because it was running on a ps5 they did say that and it was kind of interesting they they were definitely leaning more towards because i think they have a, a very close relationship uh epic and uh sony so they were running on a ps5 they said that they didn't say anything about any other consoles during that demo but they did come out later and specify yes it will run on xbox series x um and did they say if, if i remember correctly did they say it's going to run on other platforms as well like, i'm not sure i i believe it, it uh, iterations of it are, or versions of it are going to be on other platforms so it is exciting to see that technology really advanced in there um but we're going to get that not just on ps5 other platforms uh like the series x yeah i think i think sony has it's going to be hard to beat and compete with microsoft at this point <laughs> we They've already announced a couple of games for PS5 exclusive, Godfall being one of them, mm -hmm. um, and it looks it looks fine. But the thing that really brought PS4 like into the spotlight was their incredible selection of launch titles that were exclusive yes. to PS4, and they had incredible sales. I mean, they sold over a hundred million PS4s over its lifetime. But we need something from Sony because Game Pass is right on its heels. Yes. And I will say, um, I, I was reading a. I was reading an article from Business Insider, and they said, despite the success, the massive success of Sony's PS4, just 2.2 million people are using PlayStation Now, and Microsoft's Xbox Game Pass has over 10 million users, and estimates put Xbox One console sales at around half of PS4. So with this whole, like, this whole life cycle of the Netflix of gaming and how Xbox has kind of merged all of their titles across their platforms that have never really had segmented generations of Xboxes, you know, it's going to be tough for PS4 to compete with that. And I hope PS4 can up their game, but with nearly five times the amount of subscriptions of Game Pass, with Game Pass, man, it's a tough sell for anybody to get a PS5 launch day. It is It is going to be interesting. Now, this whole generation is going to be unique regardless. Microsoft has definitely put some big uh, big things out there like the smart delivery system, you no longer buying multiple game or multiple versions of the same game right. across generations. Um, Sony has not announced anything yet. Now, it's not to say Sony doesn't have a bunch of tricks up their sleeve. I know that one of the things they have going for them is uh, on the spec sheet is their SSD is technically faster. So it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. Sony, I think, came out and said, hold on, Microsoft's announced a bunch of stuff. Don't write off PS5 just yet. Let's let the games uh, speak for themselves, or the sales, excuse me, speak for themselves, selves. <laughs> Um, but they haven't said much, so right. it's kind of hard. And it's hurting them. It's it really, is. it's it really is. hurting their market value, especially in the Corona. You know, yeah. like Xbox has come out and said we're going to be super transparent and give you consistent content about our upcoming console every month for the next few months, and it's like it's crazy. And I will say, you know, and that's good or bad. I know that the last, uh, the last one that was in May, the 2020, it was about third party games, gameplay reveals of things, and that that. Uh, uh, I thought the 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 keynote or the what do they call it the the briefing or the the what do we call that thing vidcast on the vi yeah exactly it's so different nowadays um but that whole thing it was fine it was good to show a bunch of third party games that's what people have been wanting are games yes there wasn't as much of the gameplay and Microsoft has come out and said hey 
we get it. We've been hearing the feedback. It may not have been up to the level that you expect, um, but they have been transparent about everything, right. even the you know the uh, apologizing for something like that. So I think it's better to have more information out there, like the Xbox has been doing. Um, Sony uh, for PS5 I, to hide their cards yeah. and be like, "Ha ha!" It better is, be like a royal flush or something. And, and it could be. I mean, Sony right. has. I mean, obviously they It'll have sold be a full house or something. Millions and millions of consoles, and they have a very successful uh, track record. But you know, history repeats itself. When the PS3 and the Xbox 360 came out, right? Microsoft won that round because of just the uh, amazing console that was the games. Uh, the PS3 was definitely uh, a different thing. It was overpriced. There was a bunch of things like that. Not to get into that, but the PS4, they they jumped ahead again, and right. Microsoft was on their heels, and they didn't do so great with that launch of Xbox One. But with new leadership, they have come out the gate strong uh, with this uh, lead up to the console. So it is a very uh, interesting time to be a gamer. So well, Brando, with all this Series X and PS5 news, why don't we play a little game? Let's yes. let's discuss predictions on the pricing of the consoles and i will say the closest person to the price without going over should have to do a let's play of the other person's choice or sorry Ooh. yeah whoever's the Wait, loser the, there's a loser yes has to do that. sorry yes. whoever's the loser has to do a let's play of the winner's choice so who gets to go first though because i feel like we might have the same prediction right right well <laughs> so I'll say, listen, I'll do Xbox, then you do PS5. Oh, crap. Okay. And then I'll do PS5, and then you do your Xbox. Okay. 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 All right. So I think that the Xbox Series X mm -hmm. is going to land at 400 Really? Wow. Okay. Okay. I think we're going to go 400 400 That's a little low, but... Hold on. Hold on. Just because you did say something very specific, if you go over... You lose. Should I say three ninety nine? I'm just curious because if, if it's gonna be four hundred, I think it's gonna be three ninety nine. So <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. I should have just said. <laughs> no, I already gave my guess. I think okay. it's four hundred. Four hundred is gonna be a four hundred price point for just a base package. But you think it's? I mean, three ninety nine though. Okay. Yes. I'm just saying. Yes. You, one dollar over is retail. Losing. Retail three ninety nine ninety nine. Okay. Um, three ninety nine ninety eight. <laughs> What's your PS five prediction, Brandon? Uh, okay. I think. Okay. I think. So I think that PS4, here's my reasoning, by the way. Microsoft has already come out and said they're going to be fluid on price. And I think they're playing a game of chicken right now because Microsoft has announced everything about the Series X except for except price. Except for price. And they don't want to be caught. Thank you, free market capitalism. Yes, they, <laughs> they do not want to be uh, on the wrong side again because last year... People were up in arms. Oh, yeah. Now, again, they had the Kinect built in. That's why. But it was $100 more than the PS4, the Xbox and One. no one used Kinect anyway. Exactly. And so that was something... I used the voice. I, I like used Kinect. But anyway. No one used Kinect. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that was a big thing is, okay, this console is $100 cheaper. Absolutely, we're going away, plus all the games. Microsoft has, has the support of the CEO and other top level people saying they can do what they want. And they are they're gonna price dollar they're in a price match or are they gonna go? Oh, I, I don't know what they're gonna do, but I think that Sony, who is nowhere near when they go the home, that, we go high. <laughs> <laughs> I think that um, depending on what happens, if if Sony comes out first their price, I think that Microsoft is either gonna match it or go lower just to really stick it to them. So with that said, I don't think the PS4 can go low. I think the cost of this machine that they're going to be making, it's going to, they can't take a huge loss on this. They don't, they can't afford that. So I think, uh, I'm leaning around. There's a lot four, of talk for I know, no I know. answers, Brando. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to talk it out. Either 450 or 500 is where I'm going. I'm mm. going to say, uh, Sony's going to want to try and get as cheap as possible. They're going to, they're going to say 450, 449. 449, 449? For, for a PS4. Okay. Five. That, that, PS5. <laughs> PS5. Brandon says 449 for PS5. I'm going to say... You're going to say... 499. You're going to say 499. Okay. I, I, I only say right. that because I do agree they're playing a game of chicken. Yes. But Sony has historically always had more expensive consoles. And I see consoles like the PS4 Pro start yes. at 400 which it wasn't even like true 4K, mind you. And it was going for 400 
I think the PS5 with new Dual Shocks yes. are going to be four ninety nine. Dual Sense. Dual Sense. Oh, sorry. I think it's called Dual Sense. Dual now. Sense. It doesn't shock you anymore. It just senses you. <laughs> I think you're right, honestly. And I don't know what I was thinking saying four fifty. <laughs> now I'm going to have to suffer if I'm wrong. But um, you have you have you have two chances of being now, right. Well, but now my Xbox one is all thrown off now because. I was thinking the Xbox, it can't, it can't be lower than PS4, and I thought they'd either match it. I would say, hmm, because 500 people were saying it was going to be $600. I don't think that's even possible, especially in this time that our country is Brandon, in. There's no way. Brandon, we I'm going to say, four, I say four, 450 449 for the Xbox again. I'm just going to say so it the same price. So 449 across the board. A brave man. A brave no, man. I'm just playing in the middle of the road. So. All right, that's fair. But I think you're probably right all right audience <laughs> i'm probably right but we'll You're find out right. for sure and brandon might have to play a terrible game i'm probably just relive superman 64 oh. no i'm just kidding i would make you do that <laughs> all right so let's talk about some games let's that do it have been released yes and we're going to talk about the legendary final fantasy 7 remake wow it's finally here oh what and it's been here yes so <laughs> it came out in early May, like the 9th? Was it April? It was April. Yeah, was April 9th, something yeah, yeah. like that. Uh, it was in April. <laughs> <laughs> it was in April sometime. <laughs> anyway, um, this game is incredible. And from a guy who did not play the original Final Fantasy VII, disclaimer, I did get the Switch the Switch version, and I played through the first like act, essentially, which is what they were describing. So you haven't even beat the original. I either. have not beat oh, the original. Oh, same here. I, I literally... I. Always known about Final Fantasy VII. I've known all about it. Hadn't played it either. Got the Switch version as well. And I got through Midgar. Right. Midgar. I've got through that. And I'm in the open world now. So I'm in the same place as you. I thought you beat that. And fellow casual, let's just be honest here. Casual gamers. Let's just be honest here, people. Those games have not aged well. That's, I know that is kind of like, you, shocking for those I, purists out it's there. It's just like... And I will say, again, this is probably going way down. God of War, <laughs> Final Fantasy VII, the original. They are different. Different, different things. And I will say, for those who are watching this, who actually really are diehard fans of video games, uh, we love games, don't get me wrong, but I will say that whole limit break and three times speed on the Switch I know, uh, port, it makes every difference. It is so nice. Praise. I, I really just want to get the story, and I don't really want to be challenged by the original. I right. want to get through it. Um, I know that is like awful to say, but wow, I love those features. <laughs> <laughs> the first step is admitting uh, that you have a problem. Anyway, yes. <laughs> um, but, but let's be honest here. Final Fantasy VII Remake is true to the original in almost every way. And I'll go through it in a bit more detail. First off, they changed up the combat system so it is so incredibly fluid. This is not turn-based combat. Cool. What they've done is they've done a hybrid. So we had Final Fantasy XIII with Lightning. And that was a essentially live action turn based, but it had this stagger gauge break system where if you essentially attack your enemy with moves really quickly, you could essentially break their defenses down and do double damage. But it was so long and so slow, it just took forever to play that game. Whereas Final Fantasy 15, the next console title, Final Fantasy 15 was completely live action, but all the combat was automatic. So you would hold down the X button, you'd do your flurry combo moves, and then you'd switch up your actions and you'd call on your teammates to help and all that jazz. But it was all very like, it was live action, but it wasn't, right? Final Fantasy VII takes the best from both of those games and makes their combat hyper-realistic, really smooth, and it is never boring to play combat in Final Fantasy VII. And that is probably the best combat mechanics any Final Fantasy game I've ever played. Um, it is a hybrid of the stagger bar system, but every move you get to select and choose. You only control uh, you can you only control one character at a time, but you can easily m migrate between characters in the moment. Time slows down by like 120 percent. Sorry, that doesn't make sense. Like 80 <laughs> percent, and you get That's to so select <laughs> your actions for each character, and it's. Super seamless. The story is exactly like Final Fantasy VII cool. with some extra stuff added in because obviously, like, you're going to have some filler. And I will say from a purest Final Fantasy VII experience, the developers have recognized that they need to include a little extra story to make the game worthwhile for players to play. And it's yeah. only going to support the actual story. Like, it's going to be canon with the Final Fantasy franchise. And that whole game, just so I, because I have not played it yet. I want to play it. 
time, you know. We get casual. it. We get it. So it is only the, the Midgar, right? The only right. that's the only part of this game. Yes. Right? So the actual Final Fantasy VII game would take you about eighty hours to play through the actual the whole game, original the game. actual whole original game about eighty hours, right? And they managed to fit forty hours of quality content and only let you play through the first act. Once you get outside, the game is over for gotcha. the first episode. And let me just tell you, it is a joy every hour you play. That's awesome. It is an incredible joy. That is awesome. And I will say this with a disclaimer. The one thing, the, the things that I didn't like about it was that there wasn't a ton of replay value in that I did platinum the game, so I played through a normal mode and a new game plus mode, which is great. A great change is the new game plus. I will say, though, the second time through the game, you already know the story, and the game is built to flow like a film. Okay? So if you like watching movies, this game, it'll blow your mind. <laughs> With the story that it tells, the scores are incredible. Nobuo Oematsu did the original score for Final Fantasy VII. Nice. He did the remake score. His fingerprints are all over it. <laughs> that being said, although the story is incredible, for people who want to play through it again, it's a tough sell. But it's fun to go a second round. I'm, I'm excited because I... Like I said, I, I I am very familiar with that world the, the, or the all the fantasy uh, Final Fantasy games. I just hadn't really jumped in this one, which I know is crazy how iconic it is. Um, so I'm excited just to to live that uh, for this generation. Um, so and again, like you said, the the scores, the music there. I know a lot of those songs, and I've heard them so many times that I didn't realize that what game they were from. And I was right. like, oh my gosh, I I love those uh, those songs. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, I'm excited to, to jump into it. Um, now you said it's a hybrid, you know, it's that you can, is it, you, can you do the turn base that I see that you can switch back and forth between the play styles or is it just no, one? Play it, style? Is, it is just that one play okay. style, but and it's it, a hybrid of turn based to okay. live action. Okay. It's pretty much, if I were to describe it in simply like layman's terms, it's a live action fight. Nice. But it has like turn based elements in it. Here's another question. Yeah. So final fantasy, the original games there, uh, relied heavily on the whole random battles thing. You're walking around and all of a sudden a little and then right. it goes to a battle. You're like, oh wow. Is that in this game? No. Not at all. So battles random are, battles are yeah, not a thing. They're gone. You're not gonna get accosted by some random haunted house flying in the middle <laughs> of the Invisible thing and then all right. of a sudden three enemies are there. Right. So are there battles in the real world and you see those characters so you can like steer clear of them or no battles at all in like the... the yeah, so, so it takes that perspective of Final Fantasy 13, where if you can avoid a confrontation, you can run away That's cool. and battle removes itself. But with the amount of fun it is to fight, I didn't want to run away. Like Plus, I fought every single person. I'm assuming you're still leveling up just like any RPG. Right. So the more you grind, the, the better right. you're... You know, okay. And there's enough space there to level up that you'll level up through you know both game plays if you decide to go a new game plus route. So you're not going to get capped in the first new game and then feel like, oh, well, I'm just going to go through this now and just have a bore. No, it's continually a challenge, and I think you would really enjoy it. So if you were going to buy Final Fantasy VII, totally do it. And the uh, I'm going to say one more thing while I'm just going on this rant here. The voice acting. <laughs> top notch nice. quality okay nice. i cannot explain enough how, all the feels <laughs> i received from watching them play out this incredible storyline and part of the final fantasy 7 original was that you had to kind of imagine and connect the story through what you experienced and kind of use your imagination <laughs> and they left nothing to your imagination in this game. Everything is spelled out in a beautiful, story-driven way, and it is just incredibly moving in almost every way. Good. And you kind of see the growth of Cloud from the stubborn character to a to a heartfelt character, and you see all of his friends kind of move along that same route, and it's just an incredible experience, and there's nothing quite like it. And especially in this day and age, I would have never expected a linear RPG like Final Fantasy VII could steal my heart, and it did. That's awesome to hear. So... Since I haven't played it, I'm not going to review anything like that. What would you give it if you had to give it a score? Okay, so if I were to give it a score, I'd definitely give it a 9. And nice. the only point that I would knock off was it's very much a short game, maybe <laughs> maybe 40 to it 50 is a short hours. Game. Okay, I've yeah. been hearing that it was like so full because, I mean, they had to flesh it out and there's so many extra things. It is only going to be about 40 to 50 hours of gameplay. Is that main story only or with side quests? That's, that's everything. 
I guess that's right. You platinum it, so yeah. With no. side quests, forty to fifty hours, and then there's not a whole lot of replayability. Like once I beat the game, I was left longing for more, and I couldn't. Well, guess what though? Isn't this just part one? Yeah, uh, yes, this but part I'm expecting it to take thing? another four and a half years to give me another one. I thought I heard though, because again, we don't know how it many took parts. Took many years. They did say yeah, it's been in the works for for a long time, but they didn't say how many parts to expect. Again, this is just the Midgar part. I, again, playing the original, I don't think got to the open world. I have no idea how it, what, what's going to happen in the original game going past that. Um, so playing this, I mean, for those who are experiencing Final Fantasy VII for the first time, this, you know, does it look like, does it set it up for the next game or the next um, It sets part? it up perfect. Okay, so, so it does give you that sense of like, okay, I'm ready for this next It's uh, going to be a light, like cloud will return kind of kind of thing. Cool, I like that. Yeah. Um, that is that is one thing they did say that, so actually I'm going to ask you this question. Yeah. Because they haven't announced, you know, what's to come on that. Would you prefer a longer wait with a larger slice of the game next or would you like a shorter wait time and a shorter game, maybe like part one of five titles or a part one of two or three? Right. If I can get a Marvel movie style release like every year, year and a half, like I'm all about it. Like if they can crank that out, that's not feasible that's for not a realistic. game developer. Yeah. It's really not. Um, so in, in that regard, if they're going to do the open world style, it's, it can't be linear like this first act was. and so. I really want them to take their time and make the open world section of the remake to be what it needs to be, okay? Yeah. And I think with with the way that new technology is improving the way developers make massive worlds, I think the remake has a really great opportunity to outshine in the second episode, whereas a lot of people may have been burned by this first. You know, I, I, can, I can empathize with the people who were like, I mean, I, I, I like the remake, but it wasn't the same because they only gave me Midgar, they have their chance to make this truly epic, like the scale of Final Fantasy 15, which was over 100 hours, although clunky. I think they can perfect it in this next iteration. I, I'm just, I and have I'll no wait. idea how they're going to do it because, I mean, again, I, I'm in that in the original. I am in the open world walking around. No clue how they're going to make that in the yeah. current gen because it's, it's just crazy. a little a little cloud walking around in this big, like, barely uh designed open world just walking around uh mountains and everything uh i, I have no clue how they're gonna do that uh full game i say no clue they've got amazing games out there that are open world but i'm excited to see what happens yeah yes lady and ladies and gents final fantasy 7 the remake totally worth it if you're a newcomer to final fantasy 7 is the perfect beginning and if you're an old guy playing it for the second time or girl it's got enough easter eggs to get you guys through enough fan service to bring you to play it once or twice. So I'm excited. It's great. All right, Brando, let's talk about some of the games that are going to be released over the coming months. Yes. We have got a lot of games uh, down the pike and it'll be really exciting to see what these developers do during the quarantine and help us get through this together. Let's talk about games that were announced, but maybe not on your radar. So first, first we've got last of us two. Coming June nineteenth. Yes. If you guys have not played Last of Us, the first game, it's a really incredible game, a staple of the franchise of of Sony's you know catalog. Um, they were having a lot of problems with COVID originally with d the release of Last of Us Two. It was originally slated for May 29th, and now they've moved it up to June nineteenth. So, if you guys like Last of Us, they've already released the limited edition PS4 Pro. The Last of Us 2 edition, you can pick that up. It's really expensive. But <laughs> Last of Us 2 is coming to you guys June 19th. And then we've also got a brand new game from Sucker Punch Production. Sucker Punch, not a super well-known developer, but they're trying out their very first open world game called Ghost of Tsushima. It is a game that revolves around Jin Sakai, one of the last samurai on Tsushima Island during the first Mongol invasion of Japan in the 1270s. So these developers took a look at feudal Japan during these Mongol invasions, and they are putting you in the shoes of a samurai tasked with saving the island. And the game's really interesting because it uses the environment to kind of guide you to objectives. It very much follows the flow of typical Japanese naturalism and Shintoism in that there are spirits and that there are you know environments that speak to you. And so this game allows you to take the form of either the samurai part of Jin or his alter ego, the ghost and the ghost is kind of like a 
a stealthy, stealth-based action um, kind of a character, and you can choose to play whichever one you'd like. So it'll be really interesting to see. You know, we, we haven't had a good. I mean, I think the last the last open world game I played was the Bethesda game on Game Pass. It was uh, Outer Worlds. Oh yeah, Outer Worlds. So this is nothing it's like that. that. It's going to be more like The Witcher um, okay. in that way, which I think, based on the gameplay we've seen, it's going to be very much like Witcher style gameplay. Maybe a little bit of Tomb Raider here and there, but it's going to be that kind of explore the world, interact with the world. And um, there might be some dialogue in there, but it's going to be a fun game. Hopefully there are, the reviews are kind of mixed out right now on how this game is going to fare, but an interesting pick. If you guys like feudal Japan now, both the last of us two and ghost of Tsushima, those are both Sony exclusives, right? Sony exclusives, PS5. Yeah. So it works. Or it's, PS4. It's PS4. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. PS4. Getting confused with numbers. Um, but that is no smart It's kind of crazy, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, though, that, that Sony is coming out with these two big titles because both of them have been uh, announced a while back right. and have been uh, hyped up. Uh, they are coming right at the tail end of this generation. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how that works because Sony has some amazing exclusives. That's kind of one of the big selling points of the PlayStation. Um, so it's it's kind of cool they're they're getting in under the wire before we jump into a new uh, new generation of consoles. Yes, and I will say I, I'm hopeful for Ghost of Tsushima. Hopefully, it's great, but I think Last of Us Two is going to take the cake of these two. And then, of course, we talked about Paper Mario, and we talked about you know we talked about the uh, Xenoblade Chronicles remake. Um, but also, we've got new news on Cyberpunk 2077. CD Projekt Red um, announced that they were going to release the game now on September 17th. Okay. So something to look forward to. There is going to be smart delivery for Cyberpunk, yes. which is great. This is what we expect from a developer like Project Red. They are truly incredible. They were actually one of the first developers too that announced um, uh, support for smart delivery. So that was really exciting because again, this is a game that you're going to be playing for hours. I mean, it's going to be a huge game. And this is coming again at the tail end of this current generation. People were a little nervous, like, well, do I wait till the Series X version comes out? Well, now you don't have to worry right. about it. You buy it day one, you're playing it on current consoles, at least on the Xbox side. And literally, when the Series X comes out, I, actually, I say that back, whenever CD Projekt Red releases, releases the, the Series X version of that. Um, you will have that with no extra cost, which is amazing. Yeah, so if you guys are Xbox players, it is the time to really just go ahead and buy those games you want because a lot of those AAA titles are going to support that. Yes. Sadly, not Madden. Rip Madden. Yeah. That, anyway, oh. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're not going to go there. <laughs> and then, um, of course, uh, I wouldn't be, wouldn't be understated to say Project Red is now the most valuable gaming company in Europe and has surpassed Ubisoft. So this really small developer who yeah. took this Polish story that no one really knew about has become the biggest gaming developer in Europe, and their content, it's, uh, it's great, with half the st- pretty much half the staff of Ubisoft, really. <laughs> um, it's been really really cool to see them grow. Um, and then other things to look out for on the horizon, we're going to expect announcements soon about Hellblade 2. They've already released a trailer on Hellblade 2. It looks great. It is going to be Xbox PC exclusive this time. Yes. Okay, so Xbox well, has their... Because they... Yeah, they're uh, they Ninja Theory. Ninja Theory. Yeah, Ninja Theory is an Xbox Game Studios studio. Yep. Uh, so Hellblade 2 is going to be... Li- it's going to be Xbox exclusive, um, and that's exciting. Again, day one with Game Pass, because all first-party games are day one, or day and date Game Pass launched, um, which is exciting. Uh, another thing, too... Um, they announced uh, a lot of stuff at the uh, um, at the sorry. They will announce a lot of stuff at the Microsoft uh, their Xbox 2020 coming in yeah. July. Mm-hmm. So in July we're going to get a lot, and it's gonna be their first party lineup. So I'm excited to see yes, what's that'll to come be a there. great great. Yeah, you know they're gonna talk about Halo. We're gonna we've already seen Hellblade. They're gonna talk about that. I'm I'm sure they've mentioned that you're gonna see stuff from uh, studios like uh, Double Fine. Double Fine is their latest acquisition <laughs> when it comes. Uh, to their uh, Xbox Game Studios uh, family of studios or family of game developers. Uh, So we're going to see stuff from them. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what's there. But that I'm excited because there's 15 Xbox Game Studios. a huge announcement, huge announcement. This is going to be what they're working on. And that's been one of the biggest uh, criticisms for Xbox is where is their first party? Where's the first party? You you, you can only do so many Halos and Gears of War and Forzas before people get, you know, a little So dumb with Gears of War, Brando. (laughs) So dumb with Gears. Gears, I I still like Gears. It's still a good one there for me. But I will say um, 
uh, there, like I said, there's 15 studios. I, I hope that we get to see some of the things that have been teased but not announced. I'm thinking a new fable because there's the theory that mm. uh, playground uh, playground games, which they do the Forza Horizon series, they have a second team working on a new reboot of Fable. Is what they, that's what the rumor is. I hope it's true. I have no idea. If he's wrong, we make him play a game we don't like. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, uh, well, I, I will see. I but would there's love to a see a new stuff. Fable. Fable yeah. would be a great, refreshing take. It would be, be really good. Nice. Especially kind of just back to the basics of that. I would love to see that. I would love to see other things, other uh, IPs that they had in the past. Perfect Dark has always been a... I really want to see Joanna Dark and Smash Brothers. Yes. That'd be really that, great. Honestly, it would be a good pairing with Snake there, too. Oh, yeah. But I, I, I think Snake! it would be... It'd be <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it'd be good. Uh, I don't know if that's something they're working on. I don't know, but that's just an IP because they own Rare. Uh, that'd be a good one to to pull back out of the uh, the old closet of IPs they have. Yes, so, that'd be great. But uh, but July, we're gonna see a yes. lot about first party games. See, so, yeah, hopefully we'll see Hellblade two, and then the last one I want to talk about. Uh, hopefully we're gonna see some Elden Ring. Obviously, mm-hmm. we got a teaser for Elden Ring. <laughs> Last year, I said, "Oh, I thought you were talking about the one that just the, the YouTube video recently that came out with Elden Ring, <laughs> oh, the no. total spoof thing." It's no. like, "Oh, Elden Ring's coming out." No, not the spoof yeah. video I sent you guys. Oh. No, uh, Elden Ring is going to be that new game from uh, George R. R. Martin and Miyazaki. He's from Software, so think Bloodborne, Dark Souls, kind of a deal. You love some Dark Souls. Uh, yeah, wouldn't it would be remiss not to talk about <laughs> Elden Ring. If you haven't seen the trailer for Elden Ring yet, it's pretty baller, but the audio is terrible. So go enjoy yourself, <laughs> and. uh and those are all the games you know about coming soon to you guys. Brandon, it has been a fun time talking about games tonight. Yes. Guys, if you like this video, please consider subscribing. We are the Gaming Casuals. Hit the notification bell to be notified when all of our videos come onto the internet. You don't want to miss a single episode. And of course, we'll be back for more exciting video game content coming soon to your podcast and all of your YouTubes. Be sure to hit us up on Apple iTunes, on Spotify, on the Googles, and of course, on the YouTubes. We're around. And of course, hit us up at Instagram at the Gaming Casuals. We want to hear from you guys. Let us know what you want to hear about in our YouTube video down in the comments below. Let us know what games you're excited about. Brandon, what are you playing right now? What am I playing? Yeah, what are you playing right now? Uh, so I've been playing a lot of this sounds kind of funny. Uh, I'm not really a huge Call of Duty fan, but I've been playing Warzone with some buddies. Warzone is really uh, fun. It's been good. I've been playing Division 2 again, jumping back into that. Uh, it's always more fun when you play with friends, especially in time. Yes. Uh, In times like we're in now, no better way than to reach out digitally across uh, the country and play with friends. Uh, It's always good to do that. So Division 2, Warzone. um, I did jump back into God of War on the PS4. Yes, Uh, finally. I I know. I I got that. (laughs) Uh, And it's been like a year and a half since I played it. Uh, And I finally was like, I'm jumping back in this game. And once I got hooked back into it, I was playing it like almost every night until like four in the morning, just getting up that late. Um, but kind of, uh, and I finally beat it. It's a great game. Um, I played a little Sea of Thieves too. I'm proud of you, Brad. I, I know it's just, you know, just oh, an eclectic mix of games. So, so, uh, my quarantine, my quarantine play has consisted of platinuming both the Final Fantasy VII remake and Sekiro. So I haven't, nice. <laughs> I know it's really special. Sekiro came out last year, but finally platinumed it four or five playthroughs. It took me Good to actually beat the game. Um, each with each difficulty, increasing every playthrough oh. which is really really special my wife was so tired of playing Sekiro I, um, I, I would I would have been too probably <laughs> sitting here watching that every night just, no she went in the other room and watched the documentary oh, okay, she good. Likes. I'm um, glad no but um I don't have platinum fever but I did platinum the games I like and then right now <laughs> I've really been enjoying the heck out of Dishonored 2 okay so yeah. it's, a, it's a game pass game you can download it for free That's right. and uh you know I really really have enjoyed Dishonored you know, I really liked Dishonored back when I was in college. I thought when I played it, or like right out of college. And Dishonored 2 is a whole lot of fun. The stealth mechanics are a ton of fun. It's a really huge game. So many things to find. So many things to explore. So okay. if you guys are bored and want to get into a really visceral story, Dishonored 2. Dishonored 2. All right, guys, we're out of here. Thank you so much for watching. Tune in next time. We'll see you guys on our next episode. See ya. See ya.